Hey, Dan. It, uh, let's look at this camera. There we go. It is, um, oh, 8.30-ish on Friday night, and Beth is comfortably ensconced in Houston. Uh, Galen is sleeping in a cardboard box. Where? I don't know. Hey, Marshall, where's Galen? Ra lacrosse, I think. Um, the Universal Universalist Church, whatever they're called, is organizing um, a night of, uh, um, I think I call it a sort of a, a salve on a guilty conscience. Um, so they're going to go out and sleep like hobos for a night um, and um, open their minds to the plight of the hobo. Um, uh, Duncan is, last I saw he was out at Keith and Virginia's. He just got done with like a four hour hike with some friends and they were eating dinner. Preston and Colleen are out at Keith and Virginia's for the night and I and Marshall are here alone. Um, and I am going to be hunting first thing in the morning, so thus the divestment of the children. Um, so that was a two-minute intro. Uh, that was sort of pointless. Uh, my apologies. Um, the real reason for this video is to talk about uh, what's going on at Penn State. Um, as I said in my... Uh, I guess my intro here a couple of videos ago, I think the reason it's important to talk about is simply because people, I think, historically don't want to talk about it. Um, they, especially where sexual deviancy is concerned and sexual assault is concerned, people are not comfortable uh, talking about it. Uh, especially in this country where we tend to be a bunch of Puritans anyway, um, you know, we don't talk about sex as is, much less, uh, I mean, normal sex, much less deviant. Um, and so I just, I feel like, you know, I'm one guy sitting in Winona, Minnesota, but that doesn't mean I can't still talk about it. Um, and to talk about um, um, you know how this whole thing played out. Uh, I don't know if you went through and read the affidavit uh, for the grand jury. It's um, you know they talk about one or two victims in the media, but there's actually six that they outline or seven that they outline in the grand jury. Um, and uh, in this affidavit for the grand jury. Um, and one of the interesting, um, you know, one of the things I think about is I try to put myself, as you, you know, like you were saying, into um, the authority's position. So you've got McQuery, who's the grad, who was the grad assistant at the time, who's now actually, as you probably know, um, one of the uh, assistant coaches for, the, for Penn State, um, who actually comes across them. Uh, and that wasn't the the first time that Sandusky had been caught in the act. He'd also been caught at one of the local high schools um, and asked not to come back uh, previous to that. And there were several other instances, um, in obviously involving him and boys. So, you know, when I think about it, I think it's probably fairly likely that um, people had an inkling and a suspicion about him and knew that he was a creeper. Um, and um, and yet, the, I think one of the issues is you want to be presented with factual information. You want to be presented with eyewitness factual information before you ruin a man or ruin his career. Um, but again, we, 
part of the struggle for me is where do we place the rights of the the victims above the rights of the uh, victimizers. Um, and we do have to tread very carefully before we start throwing accusations out. But I think the tendency is, has been just to not do anything about it. Um, I, I think that you know, when I read the affidavit, McQuarrie says he went into Paterno. He was the first one he talked to. Actually, he talked to his dad first. He called his dad because I thought he was freaking out. Um, and, and and what McQuarrie said, of course, what he saw was that Sandusky was buggering this boy in the showers. Um, and um, but. Uh, so he calls his dad, and his dad says, listen, you need to tell the coach. So he calls, and actually goes and sees Paterno. Um, I, I can imagine a couple of things there, you know, just realistically. Um, I mean, Paterno's a smart guy, right? He's been, he had to have been a smart guy because he's been at that, not only coaching, but has been coaching at Penn State for that many years. Um, and... That takes a, a certain amount of political savvy and success, of course, too. I mean, and certainly he was successful. Um, but, um, you know, he has to be, in all, and I'm sure has always been cognizant of liability to the school and liability to the program. Um, and so, you know, McQuarrie says he went and told Paterno exactly what he saw, that Sandusky was... You know, sodomizing this kid. What Paterno in turn tell, tells um, Spanier and Curly was that, you know, that uh, uh, Sandusky was, um, there was inappropriate behavior, perhaps sexual, involving Sandusky in a, in a, in a kid in the locker room. So, you're, you're right, at that point, um, you know, legally and procedurally, Paterno um, certainly did what he should have done. Um, the question is, is um, I mean, of course he went and told them. I mean, I, I can't imagine he would have done anything else because at this point he's got, you know, a former assistant coach, you know, who one, at one time was going to be, you know, the next head coach at Penn State, or, you know, thought to be, and, um, um, and I, I suspect, Dan, that they, that they had their suspicions about him, you know, these things, these things are not, you just, the problem with people like Sandusky is you, you can't hide all the signs. You think you can, but you're so deviant that the things that you think are normal, other people still see as being moderately deviant as well. So, um, you know, the very fact that he was naked in the shower should have should have obviously set off signals to these guys. Um, now, the question is, is, okay, so Paterno had done this. What, you know, what you know, should he have done at that point next? Um, well, you know, certainly one thing that's important to him is the, is the football program and the success of the football program at Penn State. Um, so the question becomes, if you have supervisors who you think are not doing their job in a, a, a criminal way, What's your responsibility to act? Um, you know, you you had a hard enough struggle with just getting this air conditioner unit fixed, and we're really frustrated. Part of your frustration was that okay, maybe I should have stayed on these guys and made sure to follow up on it because, you know, at the end of the day, when you knew about it, yeah, this the facilities guys might get yelled at, but you're going to be held higher, you know, more more responsible. Now, granted. Had you been called Deb and said, Deb, this is going on, you know, does that end your 
responsibility. Uh, but this is different. That's the same. I'm not going to talk about air conditioner. Never mind. I'm sorry. Um, so going back and thinking of putting myself in Paterno's shoes, um, I mean, first of all, I mean, the man is, what, he's 80 now? 84? This is not something that his generation ever, I mean, they're not going to talk about it. They're not going to deal with it. Um, they're going to say, don't bring boys on campus anymore and call it good. Um, but the world, the world has changed significantly in that not only are we starting to talk about these things, but we are actually, in fact, required to talk about them. So, um, you know, I, 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 I think that Paterno must have known that it didn't go any farther than Curly and um, Spanier. Um, I would find it hard to believe that he would have told them and simply then put it out of his mind and not paid any more attention to it. Um, because it just it just seems like it's it was such a greater issue than that, and they and they had to be aware. I mean, of course they were aware of what dynamite this was, and what this could do to the school and to the program, and to the reputation. Um, and that is an awful position to be in. Um, it really is truly because there are a lot of people at that school, <clears throat> a lot of people in that football code program who are honest. In fact, the vast majority of them who are honest, who are hardworking, and and deserving. Um, and yet, they are going to be taken down, and their opportunities are going to be diminished because of what one man is doing. Unfortunately, that I don't think that justifies not following through and holding that one person responsible, which I think is what they chose to do. Um, from the law enforcement perspective, Dan, I, when I was at um, Washington State, when I was at Wazoo PD, um, they weren't even holding the alumni responsible for alcohol violations in the stadium. Um, there was a huge huge double span standard, uh, especially where the football team was, you know, was involved. When I was actually at uh, Pullman PD and it was investigating a big um, sexual assault crime involving football players, it was amazing how controlling Price was of the whole scene, and my access was all with Price being present, which was crap. You know, our chief should have, you know, demanded something different. Um, and um, it, I'm sure it was all scripted you know, all scripted on their part as well. And, uh, you know, and afterwards, you know, Price gives me the handshake, says, boy, it should be nice to have you and your wife over for dinner sometime. And I'm thinking, man, what crap. Uh, he, obviously, he deserved what he got in Alabama. Um, but, um, so I, I think that um, just based on my experience, they, there was more information at hand and even if there, even if all Paterno got was, hey, Sandusky was in the locker, you know, in the shower with a 10-year-old boy and they were naked and fooling around, that in, in and of itself is enough, you know, for, should have been enough for Paterno to have insisted that this guy never show up on their campus again. Um, and yeah, in terms of following through and finding out who the victim was, law enforcement responsibility, absolutely. But uh, if I were Paterno, I would have called Sandusky in his office and kicked his ass. Uh, I would have been absolutely furious because of what he was what he was doing, not only to the victims but doing to the program. You know, and again, I hate to be so political about it, but you know, Paterno's responsibilities were certainly to the school and to that program. and um, but, but at some point, we have to stop thinking, I think, about those issues and think about the issues of the defenseless. Um, how can we even think about the reputation of a program until we have completely thought and talked about the... Um, how to put the life back together of 
a 10 year old sexual assault victim. Um, and, and that's the hard thing because how, I don't know, um, I don't know how they even begin to do that. Um, because there's so much money and there's so much, and I'm not talking about Paterno here, I'm talking about, you know, Spanier and Curly and so much money at stake. Um, so much alumni money and power um, and so much pressure that um, it's understandable. I can understand what they did and why they did it, but I don't have to excuse it. Um, and um, you know, and I think that's what Paterno's feeling feeling right now is. Um, I don't know. I mean, how, I, I'm not sure how I would feel if I had been presented with something like that and I reported it and then let it go and then it continued to happen and continued to happen. You know, he continued to bring boys onto campus. Um, so, um, yeah, it's a, it's a bad deal. And, um, you know, it's not something that we actually even want to talk to our children about, but I don't know how we not we don't talk to them about it because the last thing I want is for one of my children to run into somebody like this and feel like they can't talk about it, which is exactly what the victims feel like, which is how the Sanduskis of the world operate because they know the victims aren't, by and large, aren't going to talk about it, and they're going to just lock it up and um, and never ever utter a word about it. Um, so, I don't know, but I can't imagine sitting down and talking to Colleen and Preston about this. I can't imagine you sitting down and talking with Taryn about it. You know, but I think in, in, some, in some way we have to be able to say, listen, the world is a safe place, but, you know, not as, if, if you ever run across this kind of thing, absolutely feel comfortable saying, no, get out of there and tell me. Um, you know, these are, these are evil people. And uh, I'm not sure what other word to use about Sandusky, you know what I mean? I don't really use that word much, if ever, but, you know, the, um, the, uh, the sheer torment he has put so many people through is, is utterly amazing. And, um, you know, you would wish for... Um, uh, no, anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop it here and um, uh, go to bed. So I'll talk to you later.